So my name is Jose Ramon Galaviz. I'm a recent graduate at the University of West Florida, I uh, graduated with a finance degree, and I'm actually currently interning for Jim Sparks. Uh, and he has signed me up for the Munimod project, uh, Florida League of Students, and uh, that should be in about five weeks. So uh, we've actually been starting to work on a project. Um, and so let me start off with what is the Munimod project. Uh, basically, we're trying to come up with something that we could sell uh, city governments um, on what can increase value in the community or increase city engagement. So we are uh, targeting municipal governments of all sizes, small, medium, and large, so from Pensacola to Orlando or Miami. Um, the benefits uh, of this that we want to bring to the municipal governments is enhanced data research, facilitated reporting, and increased city engagement. So let me start with the problem. Um, me and Jim have uh, come up with uh, a couple of problems that we see in our in Pensacola at least, and um, one that we can uh, from talking to faculty actually at the University of West Florida, we came up with uh, the fact that there is a lack of total city engagement, um, lack of fair representation from uh, lower income neighborhoods as well as uh, you know it's skewed from you know. Uh, representation from lower income neighborhoods uh, to higher income neighborhoods such as um, East Hill and the absence of convenient reporting portals so um, aside from you know city council meetings and whatnot is uh, there's no um, portal to actually have people that don't have access to technology and um, and city council meetings to where they can actually go and uh, load off their complaints and suggestions and whatnot so our solution, um, so far we uh, come up with an idea to have bring kiosks to high traffic local businesses um, from every neighborhood, uh, or well, at least one part of the neighborhood that uh, you know that East Hill has, or um, for example, uh, I guess the Alphabet Streets um, and stuff like that. So. Um, what is going to be in the kiosk is the software that we are coming up with to provide a portal for suggestions, complaints, and appraisals. Um, so, for example, uh, actually talking to one of my peers yesterday, he came up or he came up and told me about this uh, this portal or this website over in St. Pete and Pinellas County area. Uh, talking, I think it's called C Click <coughs> Fix, which is basically like. Um, where people can go online and uh, talk about you know pothole here, pothole there, or, like trees in the way, and uh, basically like they put it in there and then the city can go fix it. So I want to do that, but have it into an area to where there's high traffic, uh, you know, people coming in, mainly like a convenience store probably. Um, so someone can go in there and they can put in their complaints and reach to the city uh, a lot a lot more efficiently than what a city council meeting would do or a website for that matter. Um, so also uh, an additional aspect of that software, I want to put in there events, um, the city events, so it would uh, also help the city bring out you know, what we're doing in the community that uh, a lot of people wouldn't even know about um, if they don't have access to internet and you know, uh, I guess word of mouth and stuff like that. So uh, that would be our solution. And so how are we going to do it? Um, one, whenever I was bringing this up to uh, one of my peers as well, is um, I want to do, you know, a kiosk idea to where, uh, you know, people can go in and, like, as they're leaving the store, they put in their uh, complaints or suggestions. However, he brought up the idea that uh, a lot of people aren't going to go straight into, um, you know, using the kiosk because it might be like a waste of their time or whatnot. So what I want to do is engage uh, students from colleges and high schools and even uh, local civic organizations and have them on a, uh, you know, on a student payroll, maybe like $10 an hour, uh, to where they show or train the community as to how to use it and what it does um, from, you know, Monday, every other day during the week, so like Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, and that way they are training the community as to how to use it and what it does for them and the community in the, or the city of it. Um, so that is who would be doing it. Um, how are we going to finance it? Uh, I'm still in the research part of this part. Uh, however, um, we wanted to have the city do the public maintenance and have them service it whenever it's down. Um, and then the company, or ourselves, 
We would, uh, we would do the service land agreement. Uh, we would do the training, of course, for the uh, students of the college and, and uh, high school students and whatnot. <coughs> and we would pay for the software, and we would also pay for the reporting part of it. So um, uh, here's a little, um, I guess, template of our Rio test. Uh, whenever we were going down, we just ran a little bit on the board. And um, we found out, actually, that uh, the delivery method it would be what is standing out as our sustainable advantage um, because one, it's valuable. Two, it is rare because all we have so far is the website that I was talking about, at least from my knowledge and current research. Um, and then imitable, uh, or inimitable, um, because if we're the first ones to deliver that and we have kiosks all around the city, then that would be our you know, first two market. So that would be what we believe so far is our sustainable advantage. <coughs> and that is all I have right now. Um, Yes. Yeah, Want any questions? Very good. Let's give Ramona. Yeah, yeah. I told him he was presenting at nine o'clock. Anyway, questions, Felicia. I think this is a great idea, and uh, obviously we put a lot of thought into it. My my question is, say for instance, someone there's there's mentioned reporting potholes or other kinds of problems. Um, when someone actually goes to the kiosk and reports a problem, who does that go to? And who is responsible for um, addressing the problem? And then how do the people who participate know that their suggestion has done any good? Uh, and so you mentioned, and also it, along with this, you mentioned training it in the community. What about the accountability on the part of the government employees tasked to do these things, like fix potholes right. or order, you know, or you know, order potholes to be fixed? Okay. That's that's where that everything else looks good to me. Yes, ma'am. But have you thought about those things? Um, the latter half of that question I have not put too much thought about, um, however that first part, uh, we do, we do um, for example, our, 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 the, city municipal, or the city government is what our customer is, so what we'd like to do is find a way to, like, whenever we put in a suggestion or a complaint, because um, the city government has different departments that handle different things, correct? So what we wanted to do is actually reach out to that certain department and make sure it goes to them, and uh, so that way it cuts out the mayor's like you know uh, I guess allocation. Um, so we wanted to do it directly to the department and have them you know go out there and see if they can fix it and uh, see if that would actually uh, be something that is feasible uh, to do. So you're saying. All the requests and all of it's going to come to you as the company, and then you're going to serve as that intermediary to go back to the government. Uh, yes, ma'am. Until we can come up with a so with uh, some way to include that into the software, to where it can connect that complaint or suggestion straight to the department. Um, of course, that would take uh, negotiation with the community or the government, but that is what we would like to do first. And so, the, the bottom line to this is. Why should I, as Jane Citizen, walk up to one of these kiosks and spend my time interacting with them? Right. Um, mainly uh, because the problem was that uh, lower income or people who don't have access to technology to complain or uh, access to suggest things uh, so they can get out there and put a word in for what their neighborhood needs mm -hmm. and what it lacks. Um, so that way, not only does it help out that neighborhood and um, I guess community for that matter, um, but it also helps out the government increase the value of you know that part that they have been lacking. Okay, I, I real I, I understand what you're trying to do. But realize <laughs> that often the problem in these areas for for this for, for the, the target that you're, you're you're seeking about is the lack of follow through. Yes, so right. that's that's why I wanted to make sure to raise that with you. Exactly. Um, because. Quite often, the, the, the notification or the complaints or whatever is not really the problem. It's actually the follow through. Okay. Yes, sir. So, my question sort of uh, parries off of what she was saying. So, great idea. I think it's it's beautiful. Yes, sir. Um, 
why not consider an app instead of the kiosks? Because everybody's got a phone. Most of people, even, even the lower income mm -hmm. communities of a community have smartphones. So to, to me, it occurs to me as like a software uh, um, project where your app is downloadable, accessible, people are driving, dealing with whatever, they can go into their app, mm -hmm. put in their complaint, and then have it go, as you say, to the responsible party within city government. So you've got the app component, and then the soft, really then the challenge becomes, I think, the software integration within city council and city government to be able to communicate and accept all that information so that they can then turn around so I was just curious why the kiosk and not an app. Um, actually, yeah, funny that you say that. Uh, we were actually, first idea was the app. Um, however, then uh, when we sat down and talked about, uh, I guess, what the problem was, and you said that maybe lower income people do have uh, phones and whatnot, but um, that was kind of the, the or, well, I guess the part that we're trying to reach out to is the ones that don't have that, uh, the ones that you know don't have access to the technology, or older people who don't, want to use the technology. Um, I know that there's a good number of them that, you know, like don't, aren't software savvy or something like that. So I guess uh, that's the reason we moved to the kiosk was that so we have that in the area to where if they don't have the technology or something that they can go there and get that. Um, however, if we have both, <laughs> that would be perfect. Um, however, you know, uh, maybe if this kiosk idea does take off, then we could uh, better finance that app or vice versa. Yeah. I think there's a question. Yes, um, first, I wanted to say that you know going to St. Pete to look at how they did things is a great thing because I was down there for 26 years, and um, that program is probably associated with what used to be the Mayor's Action Line. And I will say, I personally put in requests um, over the the website, and within a week, the, you know, the pothole was repaired. So I mean, it, they've got the system down in St. Pete, and it works. So you know, following their model is a good thing. Yes, as far as putting kiosks in convenience stores, you know, in a retail location, you know, space is king. Mm -hmm. You know, have you have you interviewed, you know, some convenience store people to see if they would be willing to have one of these in there? Yes, actually, uh, I did go to my local uh, high traffic convenience store, which is the Shell Station off East Johnson, um, uh, which they they liked the idea. Um, the only problem was it wasn't actually the city of Pensacola, it was actually Ferry Pass, so I uh, completely missed that one. But, um, <laughs> but hey, yeah, I've definitely, uh, I'm definitely in the process of going out into the community and uh, reaching out to, you know, um, how they were liking the idea. Um, right now we were just talking to, like, government officials and whatnot, but um, that is on my list is to go talk to these high-traffic local businesses. Mm -hmm. and, and Can we get a question back there? Yeah. Is, whenever um, something is sent in, to the kiosk, through the kiosk, is there like a, a something that gives a response back to the, the, the person that's done it? Uh, yes, ma'am. That's what uh, we're. That's what we want to integrate to the software too. So that way, you know, people aren't feeling like it's just going out there and not, you know, actually being seen. Uh, I figured that would be a good way to, you know, uh, you know, have that go out, and then once it is actually sent out to them, um, you know, they can put their email or whatever, and then. Uh, or if they don't have that technology, then um, you know it just says that it was sent to that department. Um, just so, something that they get back to where they know that it has actually been uh, received. So oh. do you have like a tracking number or something where they're mailed some information, letting them know that the information has been received? Because that will let people know that, that their information is being right. processed. Right. No, um, actually I haven't worked that far yet, but that is a great recommendation and I'm definitely going to take that into account. So thank you for that. <laughs> so um, you see Click Fix, I used to live in Huntsville, they had it. And then, like Carol said, it's a very, very simple system to use. Right. So they have the back end all done. But yes. they don't have a kiosk. I think I learned of that system maybe from a billboard or maybe from a Facebook post. They mm -hmm. had. But your kiosk idea is a neat idea because now you can put that kiosk maybe not in private uh, shops, but in public spaces. So you yes. get the city now to set up the kiosk, you get the city to do some advertising on it just to say that it exists, and, Correct. and city events and things like that, plus the fact that here's a way you can input these ideas. So I would encourage you to look at, see, <coughs> see if you can connect with them. Yes, Maybe they even have APIs where you can interface with their system. Because mm -hmm. that whole back end, like everybody's talking about, 
getting the response back and, yes, and getting the work actually done is probably already handled by, by okay. the gotcha. unique kiosk out here. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, um, I think going back to your slide one, you talked about um, the fact that there's not a lot um, you know, city, yeah, lack of city engagement. I yeah. think you're kind of putting the cart before the horse because okay. I don't think you really know what the cities are looking for. So I think you need to do a little more market research. Yes, sir. What what is what does city engagement mean? It's kind of like self-starter. You know, some of these terms we use, gotcha. we don't really know what yes, everyone even means. Right. So I would really look at, at that. Why are people moving out of the city? Why are people moving to the city? Right. Stuff along okay, lines. thank you. Cool. I guess the last question we have is what can the community do for you? Um, exactly what you guys just did is, uh, you know, recommendations. Um, I, like I said, we've been working on this for maybe like two weeks and we've just been doing research. So, um, yeah, just recommendations, um, suggestions that you guys have already said it helps me out a lot considering this is in five weeks. So, um, I feel a lot more confident now having uh, gotten that feedback. Um, so, I guess. Uh, from here on out, maybe just some support and uh, further recommendations if you guys want to come up to me afterwards and, you know, give me uh, a card or something that I can reach you guys at if you guys have any suggestions. Be much appreciated. Two. Uh, thank you guys for your time. Two weeks, I'll tell you. I got some yummy energy. <laughs> <laughs>